Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Look, even, when, even when I was in the good graces of the NRA for that short period of time, when I thought that they could be reformed, I now realize how dumb I was. Um, and I told you so. Yeah, you did. And you have rights to tell me so, because you did say, I'm going to tell you, I don't want to say it, but I'm going to have rights to say I told you so. And you're right. So, um, okay. So check one off, Yankee. Yeah. You know, right. one I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Wayne Lapierre and, the, and those clowns, um, they live on this. They, if, and if, if you don't believe me, go watch the interview. It's, it's, I posted on my link on Facebook. I, I post the interview with Chris Cox where he says that a, that they believe NRA, they believe that, you know, any device that makes a semi-automatic function like a fully automatic should be regulated, AKA yeah. banned. Um, yeah. You can find Marion Hammer's email just by searching for it. You, all, all you have to do is 10 minutes of research to find out you're being lied to. And these paid mouthpieces from the NRA and social media are, are running cover for them. And they're saying, Oh, well, they were playing chess while you're just playing checkers. And really this is a great strategy. The only problem is, is we've never had the ATF put out for comment, a proposed regulations change that would basically redefine what a machine gun is and further encroach on what a semi-automatic is. And we're being lied to by these people. Um, and I'm, and we're not making them happy by exposing them because I got a text message from one of them, but you know what? You're the one telling the lies. And if you don't know that you're telling the lies, then you're just naive. Either way, you're still hurting us. Yeah. So or, it's or one worse. of the big aspects or, or of it worse. right there. Go ahead. Yeah, or worse if you're being compensated to tell a lie, that's yeah, even yeah. worse because you're selling well, out your fellow, I mean, fellow yeah. brothers and sisters. Right. I mean, so Hickok that, and Colin Noir, I'll just say their names, but, uh, and James Yeager, but, uh, Here's the thing we're also the, the thing you hit on that's the key. They this to them was a calculated fundraising event because they like the fact that the ATF doing it is worse because if the if if senators X and Y had done it, within well, next year we'd be mad and we'd try to vote them out. Right. Because they want because the ATF does it now, they like, oh, there's nothing we can do. So we have to ship our, you know, hand our wallets to the NRA so they can do something. And that's what they wanted. That's all they wanted this to end up in being is they wanted us to be infringed. They wanted our rights to be shoved back a dozen years so that they can say, give us your wallets so we can get you back those rights that just got taken away from you. They'll just leave out the part that they are the ones that, that caused them to be taken right. away. But, they but, they, they planned yeah. it though. They've done that right. a dozen times throughout history. And I've told people every time they do it. And 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 the one thing I get upset about is people like, and, and I've, I know some people in here are big fans of Adam Kraut. I'm not because I say, dude, you're disingenuous. If you think you can change the NRA from within, even Pete Brown, now the president of the board knows he can't do anything to change the NRA from within. The only way we're going to change the NRA is burn it to the fucking ground. When your house is burning, you don't try to rebuild it while it's still on fire. You burnt, let it burn to the ground, you clear the ash, and then you rebuild. And that's what we got to do with the NRA. We have to burn it to the fucking ground, clear the ash, and start over. And we won't be undefended in that time because we got the GOA sitting right there that's already just already pretty much as big as the NRA already in the last year. It's just, a, it's just a funding shift that it needs. It just needs a funding shift. But let me say, let me say this. I, I agree with you in that just Adam Kraut alone cannot do it mm -hmm. because even the whole the, board can't do it. The yeah, whole well, board, if every fucking board member on there voted to the maximum power they had, they could change the fucking letterhead color and font. That's all they could do. If you read the beat bylaws of the NRA after the massacre that happened the first time, they rewrote every governing law of the NRA. The, all the power rests in the hands of people like Cox, LaPierre, that outside lobbying group. No power resides with the board. It is a figurehead position. It is a okay. position to get into to curry political favor to curry financial favors with companies. And that's all it is. OK, As Adam so, posted half the board members don't even show up to vote. Let me just get this from uh, I want I want to get this um, on this particular subject of what Yankee just said. I want to get this from from both you and Eric. And I'll start with you, Tim. So do you agree with what Yankee just said that it's pointless um, to try to change the board? I think that the NRA is so horribly broken. Uh, I don't know what exactly the powers the board does and doesn't have. All I know is, is from the board members that I've spoken with, um, basically Marion Hammer and her crew, uh, and, and you'll notice like Marion Hammer put out a list of 25 people. And on that list, she, these are the 25 people that she says you should vote 
into the NRA board. These are all Wayne LaPierre yes men and women. These are the same people. Go Google, and this is what I always tell people. They say, oh, you're just, you're just fear-mongering, and the NRA is the best thing that's ever happened to defend our rights. Really, spend 10 minutes Googling the NRA, and you're going to find out just how corrupt and dirty they are and all the stuff they've pulled over the years. And if you want to find out how much Wayne LaPierre makes to make yourself sick, go ahead and Google NRA tax 990. That's a 990 form that every nonprofit has to file. And go look at Wayne LaPierre's salary. What he wants is a board stacked with a bunch of yes men. So when he goes in and says, I need another million bucks a year to be a face of the organization, they all go, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. What's his salary? What's his salary? Uh, the last, I, I, I don't remember what, it, I mean, I, last time I saw it was 1.4 million, but I think it's gone up from there. I know he has okay. like a $4 million parachute, golden parachute. And, so if he ever gets fired, he'll get paid $4 million. He doesn't even require a board vote to raise his salary. Their chief financial officers can actually make changes without board approval. In fact, they can override board approval if the board says the other way and make the changes. The power no longer resides with the board. All you got to check is their corporate structuring. The board has is the board is no longer a board of directors. It's just a figurehead board. Right. Okay. So, so Eric, we're going to make this is important. This, the mm -hmm. board is simply a placebo to make the members of the NRA think that they actually have a voice in the organization yeah, they have none. That, that, that they entrust with their Second Amendment rights. And it is absolutely foolish to trust any one person or organization for, to, to protect your rights. You need to be active politically yourself. You can join these other groups, but don't think for a minute that you can trust any one man or any one group to protect your rights. OK, so, Eric, uh, on this same question, where do you come down? Okay, so my perspective is very, very similar to both Tim and Dave, David's perspective, is that the board is designed to fail. They, they have made the board so inefficient on purpose. That's why it has 76 plus members or whatever, because it's designed to be inefficient. It's designed to be slow moving. It's designed to be this, this political placebo that has no use. It's just there. So yeah, it's, it's a big issue and you know, like I understand Yankee's perspective when it comes to, uh, you know, him not supporting Adam Kraut. I, I totally get that. I understand where he's coming from. Um, the thing is, you know, it has to change eventually. And, but, you know, how, how is one guy, I mean, like how is Adam going to be able to do anything against 70, 75 other people or 76 other people that obviously don't give a crap what he says, don't give a crap what his opinion is, in fact, hates him probably, Hates him because he's a rabble rouser. And the thing is, the board did not nominate Adam. Adam got nominated through petition, which is a much more honest and straightforward way to do it in terms of getting nominated to the board. Now, regardless of whether or not the board is, a, is an efficient animal or not, or regardless of what its, its overall use may or may not be or what the perception may or may not be, the bottom line is at least Adam is going through petition to get put on the ballot rather than just a bunch of cronies on the board uh, playing political elbowing and going, hey, let's get this person in there. Well, well, who's this person? Well, this is just some person that we know is going to be a yes man, so we're just going to put him on the ballot. And, oh, yeah, by the way, you should vote for him. Screw that crap. I mean, yeah. so, so – it's kind of like I would not want to be a member of any club that would have me as a member. And I feel the same way about Adam Kraut. If you know the board is nothing but favors and power and no actual real ability to change anything, then why do you want to be a member of it? If you know it's not, if you know it's a dishonest thing, if you know you're not going to be able to accomplish anything being there, if you're saying, hey, all these being in politi politics these days is nothing but corruption. So elect well, me as a politician. If, if you want to be a part of it, why would you want, if you really believe it, that you want to change it, why would you want to even be part of it now? Burn it to the ground. Because, and, and I agree with you, David, but because, because the reason I think that is because the board is made up of a bunch of yes men and FUDs and yes men and women and people that are obviously don't give a crap. So but it wouldn't if matter you, if, if me, you, you and Tim yeah. became the only fucking board members tomorrow. If we became the only three board members and we voted, we're going to change this, 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 and this, the people with the actual power would be like, no, we're not doing that. We're not doing yeah, this. Yeah. We're not doing that. Exactly. They, they would go, all right, well, you know, you three want this, but guess what? We don't give a crap. We actually have off. the legal power yeah. to, right. to override so, you. And so let me, so exactly. let me, so let me, um, just to, you know, just to keep this focused. All right. So we're at this point. 
regardless, you know, even if we say that, okay, we could change the NRA over time, we don't have that amount of time. Something's coming down soon. And, you know, we could, you know, the, the pendulum's going to swing politically and all of that. We're running out of time every well, day. So here's the thing. Basically, what do we do now? They have, made sure, they have made sure that that cannot occur by having so many board members and making the system so inefficient. And like Dave said, basically bullcrap, like not getting anywhere, not being able to actually have any real power by making the system that way. They have ensured that they can keep their political yes men and their and their bobbleheads on top. It's it's basically if you think about it, it's better to think of it like a pyramid scheme. It really it literally is a pyramid scheme, and it's it's a system of organized crime in a way. Yeah, so like it's no different than the way a crime syndicate works. Right, I agree with you. It seems like it seems like a mafia type thing to me. So here's a question, Eric, and I'm going to start with you. Okay, we're here. What do and, you know? And I and I've seen you say this before. I've had these conversations with lots of people, including Mac. At this point, at this point of time, what we're doing, the kind of things that we do, the way that we communicate with people and we represent people, and um, people believe in us, follow us, and all that kind of stuff, support what we're doing. I think maybe not individually, but collectively, we have a lot of power. So we're here and we're having this conversation. What do we do? What do we do no, from here? I disagree with you. That we have point? power. Totally disagree with you that we have any power. Even as members, we have no power in the NRA because if you look at their financial. No, I'm not. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. What's 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 if you look at the financial reports of the NRA, they no longer make very much money off membership dues. Their membership, actual paying members, has fallen to a, the, a super low level. I would be willing to bet that they are actually no bigger than the GOA already. And uh, the, they have fallen to this level. They don't care about our dues. They don't care about what we say because all their money is coming from large donors and manufacturers. And as long as that's happening, that's all they care about. And the only people that are going to make any change in the NRA or destroy the NRA and get rid of the NRA and rebuild it are manufacturers. And then we're only going to start doing that when we start saying, hey, if Midway USA is going to do the NRA roundup at the end of the thing, I'm not buying from uh, Midway NRA USA anymore. If right. Ruger is going to send me a free NRA membership every time I buy an NRA, uh, Ruger gun, I ain't buying a Ruger gun anymore because yeah. it's already. So, so, so then we do. Matter, so no. then we do. So that's what I was referring to. Like we do have we maybe don't have any power with the NRA. We maybe can't sway politicians, but we have some kind of power. We still we right. still do. I believe you know what, guys? we could stop the NRA's plot with the ATF. We can stop it very, very simply because Trump got into office on the backs of gun owners. If he didn't have the vote of gun owners, he would not have won the White House. And he knows that. And if he doesn't know that, he's going to learn a very yeah. But how did he lesson. how did he get but, the gun owners behind him? The on. NRA just approved him. And okay, yeah. Okay. He, but we can petition him now while we're waiting for the ATF to come up with this proposed regulation that they're going to probably release sometime after midterms, so it doesn't negatively affect a Democrat or Republican. They don't want to be seen as political, so this 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 new regulation won't show up until after midterms, most likely. What we can do until then is go right to Donald Trump. Contact him through whitehouse.gov. Write a letter to him, a nice, polite, short and to the point letter saying, we oppose the scheme by the BATF and in support by the NRA to ban rate increasing devices. Please just uh, instruct your director of the ATF to stop this proposed regulations change. The president of the United States is who the ATF director reports to. He reports to Jeff Sessions and he reports to uh, Donald Trump. So we can start blowing up Donald Trump's inbox, just like we blew up Carbello's inbox. And we can see change that way because elected officials will respond to us when they get thousands or hundreds of thousands of emails or phone calls. Um, the BATF doesn't care. The politicians care because we can vote them out of office. They still remember after 1994, we saw a turnover in Congress because of Clinton's assault weapons ban. That was so negative that gun owners came out of the woodwork to vote out the Democrats. And many of the people on the Hill still remember that. And Donald Trump, if he's well read, will remember that event, too. And if he betrays us and lets this happen, he's not going to have my vote in four years. Well, yeah. So well, three years. Yeah, I told I, I agree with you on that. But here's the thing, like just so that we can get this straight, what I mean, because the, the direction that I'd like this conversation to go is relative to this. Five years ago, when I first went to SHOT Show, I remember there was this meeting that they had at SHOT Show, the NSSF and the NRA. And there were some writers that I met that were in the meeting. And I said to them, what's the, because they were very fascinated by me being a YouTuber and all that stuff. I wanted, I was like taking the bus out to the desert to media day. 
and they were fascinated by the whole YouTube thing. So this, this writer that I met told me that this meeting was about us, was about the YouTube guys, the content creators, the influencers, however you want to put it. And I said, what was it about us? And he said, they were trying to figure out how to control you guys. Mm-hmm. Okay. I know I've heard that before. Yeah. I'm and sure then after, that. right after that, and we talked about this earlier, after that, you got what happened when all of a sudden there were a bunch of cool people out there uh, talking for us. And, and uh, you know, we were with it. I was with it myself. We were, we were like we were happy that the NRA pulled people in and everything. And, and they were trying. Don't, don't but ultimately, we were with it. I work with it. <laughs> well, yeah. But ultimately, what they were what they were doing there was this is how we're going to control these guys. But they cannot do that because anyone can start up a YouTube channel. Anyone can get out there and build an audience. We've done it. And, and the, the, the question I'm trying to ask you guys really is like exactly where do we go from here if we organize and we put you know our resources together and stuff like that i think we could do something so where do we go from here who wants to who wants to start with that uh, i'll take it <laughs> hank so <laughs> no no one wants to say that. okay go ahead uh, i mean look look the thing is you youtube i mean in in some way shape or form you have to think about why people care about what people like us have to say whether it's tim or yankee or you or anybody else that's on this, it, I think that really it comes down to, it, it really is, it's an honor thing. I mean, like when you see somebody face to face and you get to know like their content and what kind of person they are, you you sort of feel like you have a relationship with that person. You get to know them. You understand, you know, like the stuff they do with their kids or the things that they do and, you know, all the things that, that just, that make up what their life is. And the reason, that, and I, I'm, I promise I'm getting to a point here. The point is we're real people. You know what I mean? We're not some talking head, bullcrap spokesman at a company. We're not uh, we're just real people. We're not actors. We're real people sharing real views. And I think people ha- it, that resonates with people, they understand like, you know, how can how can you look at Tim and watch his videos and not know that he's a genuine guy? You know what I mean? Or, or Dave, like, you because know, most yeah, of it's CGI. Sometimes- <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, you're right. His man, I'm, you like, I'm a real man, right? Yeah. But there's no, no I mean, way Matt is right. actually hitting targets. I just got to say, the they just have watch, to they airbrush out all the wires and right. Bullies. The thing is, you watch David's videos, and it's like you know, Yankee has a a certain way of coming across, and some people like it, and some people don't like it. But you know what? It's perspective that matters. Yeah, and he and his his emotion is real. His emotion is real. Perspective. I have a, yeah, I have the where, where does that come into play? Well, guess what? what? Why are we relevant to the situation? All we are is part of a giant microcosm of other people that are exactly like us. So the way that you use that to your advantage, the way that we use it to our collective advantage is we simply just be ourselves and people will sort things out on their own. And all you really have to do is just put things out there, be passionate, be real about it, which we are, we all are. You know, it's it's hard to... It's hard to match Tim's bravado, but we're all very, very, very serious about what we do here. And people resonate with that. They, they understand like, wow, you know, this guy's telling me to contact my reps, contact my senators. Look, grassroots level activism is exactly what we are doing. We have the power that they are desperately trying to harness, whether it's through uh, all the things that they do or all the money they take in at the end. Well, not at the end of the chat or whatever. <laughs> the, look, what end of the day. You know, you know what? Okay, you said it. There you go. But <laughs> what what it ends up being basically is we we all are just people, and we're all just regular ass people that are just happen to be well known, and that resonates with people. When folks see the kind of person you are, how you are on camera, the way you handle yourself, they they relate to that. And when you tell them, hey. We're going to go march on the Capitol steps or we're going to write our senators and our congressmen. We're going to tell them enough is enough or we're going to go to the board or we're going to go to NRA and tell them, look, you guys are full of crap. and We don't like what you're doing. We're not we're not, you know, reaching out to all these people for our own health. All we are is speaking to peers. And when they subscribe to your channel, when they subscribe to Yankee, they subscribe to Tim, they subscribe to you or any other program YouTube channel. They are subscribing to the fact they are saying they are they are bumping your el- their, your elbow together and they're going, look, we're with you, man. We get it. We get what you're trying to say. We're subscribing to what you have to say. That's what that means. When somebody watches your content, when somebody consumes your content, it's because what you ha- have to say matters. And the thing is, we are just part of a giant microcosm of people that are pro 2A. 
and we reach a lot of people. People are sick of it. They, they like people like us because we're just regular dudes that just happen to be well-known.